There is nothing more that I despise than these scumbag Christians who take advantage of people, who use people for their own personal amusements, and then these so-called Christians that are in their own are in this subcategory, this genre of these Christians who link themselves up with this sleazy believist heresy ideology and whatnot. It's it's this group of Christians that seem to do this. Now, what we're going to be addressing today also holds true with other um, cliques within this thing called Christianity that you're beginning to see, or I'm, <laughs> I've been seeing for quite a while, but beginning to see within the King James Bible believing Christianity movement. Give me a break. But there's nothing more odious that's what then someone claiming to be something they're not and then they take advantage of those who are weaker weaker not not weaker physically maybe not even emotionally but you know like it says in Romans chapter 15 okay Romans chapter 15 you vile filthy scumbag you know who I'm talking to. Yeah, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. You know, in answering to the query of my own question proposed upon myself, if a certain guy from England was dangling from a cliff, he, he'd stomp on my hands and let me drop. I... I will praise the Lord for his goodness and his mercy when you get cast to hell. I will praise the Lord for his righteous judgment. You despicable individual. You're despicable. I despise you. You are my enemy. Okay? And yes, there's only one other person I hate on earth who isn't myself, and that's you. And I make no bones about that. I will praise the Lord for his righteous judgment that will be upon you when you go to hell. I don't want people to go to hell. But when some of these Christians and their conduct within their own little subcategory to people who are weaker. Okay? Now again, weaker isn't necessarily weaker in physicality. In mentality, maybe, or in emotions. But you know, if someone who's claiming to be, be a Christian saved for 25 some odd years, and when an atheist like, say, Dave Murphy could treat someone else better than you could. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Romans chapter 15, verses 1 on to verse 7. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. These, these, these Christians in this subcategory, in this genre of Christianity, in this denomination that is kind of a mishmash of easy believism and whatever, it's, it's just grotesque. The way these guys treat one another. Number one, they don't judge one another because they, they, they don't, preach against sin. And number two, saved people threatening to beat up 
other saved people. You might say, well, Brad, in yesterday's video, you said, well, what I said in yesterday's video was, if the fledge, if I were a lost man, if I were a lost man, which I am not, if I were a lost man and I encountered the fledgling of pride, I would slap him in the mouth. Yes, I would, if I were a lost man. That is what I said, okay? I do not think that young man is my brother anyway, but that is beside the point. He got bigger problems to deal with when he stands before the Lord at the great white throne of judgment, okay? He got bigger problems. But these guys, these guys, these guys, these are the types of people who record uh, phone conversations with each other? Yeah, you. You despicable individual, you. Okay? Um, they threaten each other? Threaten each other. I mean, with physical violence. Okay? And these, pe these people are claiming to be saved. And a bunch of them just believe and receive. You guys are pathetic. You guys are absolutely pathetic. Now see, where it says here in Romans 15, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. What does this mean? Okay, Paul is not boasting, that, oh, I'm a big strong guy. No, 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 no. See, a lot of the time that happens with these people that have been sucked in to this easy believism genre thing, okay, they're lacking, they're lacking a lot of the truth of Scripture. Even though a lot of them may know something of the Scripture, when you run into one of these guys and they're telling you that it's by grace through faith from beginning to end, they're lacking in the knowledge of the truth. Okay, what does that mean? Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 on to verse 14. I have encountered this with Christians who have claimed to be saved for umpteen amount of years. And then when you mention to them about rightly dividing the word of truth, the redemption of the purchased possession and stuff like that. And that Magog and Gog isn't applicable for a very long time away yet. These people look at you clueless, and they look at you as if you're the heretic. Okay? See, this is the product of Christianity being deluded with the, Yea, hath God said, God loves you, just believe and receive nonsense. Okay? They're increasing in the knowledge, and they use big, fancy-schmancy words, yet they're never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And when a brother gets involved in that kind of stuff and then gets taken advantage of, that, that, there's nothing that grieves me more. And you know what else? Grieves the Lord. But see, again, in Romans chapter 15, verse 1, where it says, We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Hebrews 5, 12 on to verse 14. For when the time ye ought to be teachers, or you've been saved for 25 years, huh? And you can't even make a video yourself, and the only ones that you do attack people and put out uh, privileged information, okay? You have to have another guy do your speaking for you because you're inept. But you're really good at attacking people and hurting people. Christian. Ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Brethren, I, I have encountered elderly Christians who have been claiming to be saved for like upward 25, between 30 years and 40 years. They have no idea what about what it is to rightly divide the word of truth. 
They think it's the same from beginning to end. They come up with philosophical reasonings to try to explain the contradiction between James 2 and what Paul taught. Okay, these are also the same people that are taught the yea hath God said thing and have to look to the Roman Catholic pastors in their church buildings. Roman Catholic because they're trained by Jesuits so because they got the piece of paper on their wall. It's, it's disturbing. It's, it's disturbing. I mean, it really is. And the people who fall for this thing It's like, I mean, why are we dividing, for example, is so nuts and bolts. Um, I mean, that, and Christians don't have that. Christians do not have rightly dividing the word of truth. There are some that say that they are lightly dispensational. What does that mean? Um, genius. Okay, okay, this is what this means. When you I came across this uh, one guy um, who I started watching some of his uh, stuff. He kind of wishy-washy. But he claimed to be lightly dispensational. There's an Old Testament and there's a New Testament. Something obviously happened. Something obviously changed. Okay. When somebody got enough brain matter to at least, well, there's an Old Testament and a New Testament. There's something different. Okay, that's usually what they mean about being lightly dispensational. Okay, and, that, and that's, that's a basic premise that a lot of even atheists can, self-theists can, you know, get. It's like, yeah, the God of the Old Testament seems a lot different than the God of the New Testament. They're lightly. Do you realize that uh, self theists are lightly dispensational too, because there's an Old Testament and a New Testament. Okay, that that's a cop out thing. That's a cop out thing. We are commanded in Scripture to study to show ourselves approved unto God, to be workmen who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And these Christians, they don't know this stuff. They don't. They don't. Verse 13 in Hebrews 5. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Someone who's been claiming to be saved for 25 up to 40 years. And you don't know thing one about rightly dividing the word of truth? You think it's the same from beginning to end? Think there's eternal security in the Garden of Eden and the uh, patriarchal period and under the law and at the time of Jacob's trouble? There is for the 144,000 Jews. Huh? You guys want to say that Gog and Magog is going on today? It isn't. Don't have to worry about that for a long time. Unless, of course, you're under the absurd belief that the book of Revelation isn't chronological. Boop. <laughs> okay? You're crazy, man. Still can't figure out why, what would be the purpose for someone to be saying something like that. When, when somebody does something like that, they're seeking to justify something of their own personal belief. Whatever it is. I don't know and I don't care. But when you got someone going to go so boldly and say, the book of Revelation isn't chronological, they're, they're seeking to justify something that comes from themselves. I can guarantee you that. But that's as far as I'm going to go with that one. Okay, because I have bigger fish to fry than worry about such stupidity. But, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Go back to Romans 15, verse 2. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification, and there is none good but God. 
For even Christ pleased not himself. Yes, God the Father came here to serve. God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, in John 13, washed the stinking, rank, nasty, dirty feet of the apostles. Have any of you on a hot day worn sandals all day and then you get home and you take off the sandals? Yeah. 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 But see, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, our God, did that for the apostles. Washed their feet. You know, a lot of you need to kind of, you know, keep that in mind. That God the Father, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. Came here to serve. And that doesn't mean that he came here to give you, you know, wealth and riches. No, 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 no. See, that's the example that we as the body of Christ are to live by that Christ gave. Because a lot of what Christ preached in the Gospel of Counts were not pertinent for this dispensation. There are some that are, yes. Yes, mainly in the book of John, too, where he was preparing the disciples and the apostles for the coming dispensation, what we got today. But you got to remember, a majority of what Christ preached was in context of him, the Messiah, offering the kingdom of heaven, the physical, literal kingdom, onto the Hebraic Jewish people. You have to remember that. That's why doctrinally a majority, especially the Sermon on the Mount, that's why doctrinally, before the death, burial, and resurrection, a majority of what the Lord preached is inapplicable for us today doctrinally. Okay? And see, you Christians ought to know that. But you Christians don't rightly divide the word of truth. And if you claim to, it's, well, <laughs> there's an Old and a New Testament. Well, no kidding, genius! Even stupid head Christy Burke could figure that one out. Okay? Come on. Come on. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, making a reference unto instruction and righteousness here, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. Like-minded. I've watched and have listened to a lot of the... I, I, I stay away from them because it just irritates me and I don't want to get involved in that anymore. I don't have to because there's nothing the Lord is guiding me to that I'm aware of to do anything about these idiots rather than let them roll up another one and go to hell. But when it involves a brother who unfortunately made... Made choices. Made choices. And, 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 I, and I, I, I don't want to, you know, I'm not going to, you know, rub that in anybody's face. It's just, but... The beloved. You know the saying, you shame me once, shame on you. You shame me twice, shame on me. I love you, brother. If you watch this, I, I, I love you very much. But, um, yeah. Anyway. That we may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, receive ye one another as Christ also received us to glory. Hmm. 
that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. How can you be one how can you be of like mind with someone who thinks in worldly context on a daily basis with everything that they do how these these streaming Christians these easy believest devils okay they're worldly they're not just carnal fleshly they are of the world they're not saved they're not. They're not. Because the God that easy believism offers you is a God with no requirements. And the only time that these guys get upset is when a saint comes along and points out the obvious, hey, genius, how could it be by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden? How? It's impossible. How? 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 Okay? How? <laughs> okay? Give me a break. How is it by grace through faith in the kingdom of heaven? How? How? How could it be that? Okay? You, you guys are just crazy. Just crazy. Okay? And ye shall know them by their fruits. A lot of these guys are good at the facade and all oh, their words are smoother than butter they can oh a lot of these guys are worthy of Academy Awards but see who they really are comes out sooner or later and they shoot themselves on the foot virtually every time I say virtually because some people it takes a longer time for them to do that. But they do. In Philippians chapter 1, verses 27 on to verse, 28, uh, verse 30. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. Now, as a brother pointed out to me, conversation you think, uh, obviously, but what you're saying. But, as a brother pointed out to me, conversation also encompasses that that is beyond word. It also encompasses our behavior. Because, dude, a lot of these Christians can speak the game well. Notice I said game. Because it is a game. It's sport to these devils. It's sport to these devils. It's a game to these devils. They can speak. They can speak it good. It can sound good. But see, as a, like I said again, as a dear brother pointed out to me, it's like, you know, Brad, conversation scripturally in context a lot of the time doesn't just mean with how you speak. It also is in behavior. And a lot of these guys, again, could put on the facade and have the behavior, but just like with the magicians of Egypt, they can only go so far. Why? Because they are natural brute beasts that are not regenerate. Okay? And unregenerate men can mimic, imitate some traits of saints. But just like with the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of Scripture that is necessary to have the Lord himself to guide you into the deeper things, the same thing happens with these devil Jesuit coadjutors. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. So conversation means a little bit deeper than mere speaking. Your conversation of how, you know, you're conversing with your body, language, okay? And a lot of these guys hide their identity. And you call other people cowards. 
I got pictures of your ugly face, by the way. And of course, you, you being the coward that you are, if I were to let those out, you'd go to Mother Rome, you would use the machine of YouTube to your advantage, like you've done before. You are a pathetic individual. You are pathetic. And you know who you are. You are pathetic. You are pathetic. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, dealings with others. See, affairs like the brother pointed out to me. Affairs and conversation is not just only wording. Behavior. That ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. Dear brother, have you, do you ever wonder why these conflicts keep arising? Number one, you, dear brother, you need to permanently never get involved with these people. But that, that's, that's, you, you're doing your thing, you know, that, okay? Here when, here if you, I'm here if you need me, okay? There are other brethren there that would be there for you if you, if you needed them too, okay? Just, just saying, just saying, okay? All right? But you've noticed, you know that the constant conflict that comes up, that comes up within this genre, this group, of Christianity. Flee from fornication, dear brother. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. And I told a brother one day, it's like, look, you know, the level of persecution that you may receive as a saint doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, well, you're doing the right thing or whatnot. Why do I say that? Because Christ in you is contrary to he who is in the world, meaning the, that spirit of that spirit of Antichrist, okay? You as a saint naturally are going to chafe the natural brute beast. It just happens. You don't have to go outside the box to get that, okay? And any one of you saints know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? When you ought to be concerned is if you think you're a saint and everybody loves you, then that would be a concern. Or, or like as we see with a certain devil, but also with a lot of devils, they just are at odds with everybody. They sooner or later <laughs> find problems with everybody. I understand that. You, you, you disgusting vermin. You even got problems with your buddy, Mr. Sunken Eyed. I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, come on. This, this, this guy I'm talking about, he has a track record. Every single individual, every person, spirit, soul, and body that this disgusting devil has contact with Sooner or later, he has a problem with them. Okay? All right? It happens all the time with this guy. All right? Now, granted, I mean, if there are people who have a problem with me, but God bless them. But, you know, this is, this is something that happens with this individual all the time. And I can prove it. But see, he, he, he's a little, he's a little, he's a little girly boy. 
You little coward. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You little, you little, you little girly boy, man. You really are, Mr. Tough Guy. Yeah, you think you're so brave, huh? <laughs> yeah, why don't, you show, why don't you show your face? You got the one video that that idiot did showing your face, which you laughed at. Then again, you know, hey, 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 take off the sunglasses, huh? The eyes are the window to the soul, by the way. <laughs> but see, the point is, in verse 28, and nothing terrified by your adversaries. They turn and rend you. And threaten you. Now, there is, within the body of Christ, a time and a place for that. You know, when a brother is like, you know, needs to be admonished for something, you disassociate yourself. But you don't treat him as an enemy, you admonish him as a brother. With brothers like that, brother, who needs an enemy? If those guys that you that you have been, and these guys, if they're actually, wow, they're not safe. They're, they're not safe. But if they were, wow. Wow. Same goes with, uh, with a select few of these King James Bible-believing Christians. Okay. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which ye saw in me, and now here to be in me. See, when you grab a hot pan, you get burnt. Ow! Don't do that again. You do it again. And at first, you, you got a towel, right? To protect your hand from the hot pan. But the longer you hold on with that towel to that hot pan, you're going to feel the heat and you're going to get burned again. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Do you not know that you are already accepted in the beloved? I understand. People want fellowship. I get it. The devils want fellowship so they can infiltrate and cause problems. But a saint... You know, we have fellowship with the Lord. We have fellowship with the Lord. And, you know, if the people that you, if the people you are fellowshipping with don't out of love say, hey, hey, brother, what, what, what are you doing? People, my brethren, our brethren, who I have personal fellowship with, they will correct me. They will lay up, Brad. <laughs> and you know what they do? It's like, hey, Brad, come here. Let's let's. Hey, come on, let's talk. It's like, okay, you know, any brother, any sister, okay, any saint, coming to correct me, do it here. Do it here. And you know what they do? They do. You know, brother, brother Alexander. It's like, okay, get 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 the scriptures. Like, okay. You know, show me. And then he shows me. It's like, oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you. Okay? All right? But see, they don't do it to one-up each other. They do it out of love, which is truth. And there's no truth in these people, brother. There's no truth in these people. Galatians 5, verses 9 on to verse 26. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. What fellowship hath Christ with Belial? What fellowship hath light with darkness? 
I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. That's you, bloke. You know, the saying that we've talked about, the good seem to die young, but jerks live forever. Uh, the Lord is long-suffering, giving you every chance, or with some of you, giving you more rope to hang yourself. And with certain people like the individual that I'm mentioning in his little group that he goes, his ways are movable that thou canst not know them. But what you can know is that he's a devil. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. The offense of the cross. What's so offensive about it? Death. Nakedness. You know, Christianity affords the Catholic Christ on the cross the dignity of a loincloth. I believe the reality is that number one, as the scriptures say, the Lord Jesus Christ was so mangled in his visage and his countenance that you couldn't even tell that you were looking at a man. He was so... They ripped out his... Beard. Have you ever accidentally ripped a clump of hair out of your head? How that how you bleed like a stuck pig? Okay, they ripped his beard out. Okay, he was beaten. That disgusting Roman Catholic movie, The Passion, I think that gives you a slight idea of what the Lord went through. A slight. And hey, who would know better than the Roman Catholics? Okay, but you know, you couldn't even tell that that was a man. And he was up there, nailed to the cross, totally naked. Stripped of everything. Stripped of everything. And see, in order for the Lord to save you, you have to be crucified with Christ. Meaning, you have to be stripped of everything and die to yourself. And see... These people that are within this little genre, subculture of this disgusting thing called Christianity. There is no offense of the cross. Because what is the cross? It's death. It's death. It's shame. It's humiliation. which are required for salvation. But see, these people, they skip over that. And see, the motion there of skipping under, uh, skipping over is an umbrella where they can hide with the, well, we're all sinners. But see, the personal accountability. That's, that's the part of the cross that these people don't want. Personal accountability. Why? Because they are unregenerate. They are Adamic. The woman that thou gavest me to be with, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. The woman. The devil made me do it. And you see this behavior exemplified in Christians. Now, we as saints, we have weak moments where we <laughs> fall down. We fall, but we don't fall away. Okay? A just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. Okay? But the wicked fall into mischief. Okay? I would they were even cut off, which trouble you. Amen. 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 I wish, I wish these devils were cut off. I really do. And praise the Lord for his judgment when he does have judgment upon these devils. For brethren, ye have been called on to liberty. Remember, 
Liberty and charity are not the same thing. It's one of the reasons why the Lord took your disgusting little channel down, kid. Because the one that whose boot you lick got enough brains to know that if he tried that, oh, uh, the, the, the enemies would pounce on him like nothing. Like there was no tomorrow. And they'd be right. You are his patsy, boy. Yeah, you are his patsy. I almost pity you. But let's continue. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but love, but by love serve one another. And see, liberty for the occasion of the flesh, that's what these fake gracers, sleazy believers do. I just believe and receive. I want to say what I was saying. Hey, I can do whatever. Uh, all things are lawful for me. Hey, whatever. I'm I'm saying it's, it's no big deal. I, I shouldn't, but don't worry about it. It's not going to affect your salvation. Justifying sin. And by love, serve one another. See, there are aspects of charity which is self-sacrifice within liberty. And there is liberty within charity. But they themselves are two different things. When you come around trying to say they are the exact same thing, that's heresy. And the only reason why you did that, you little punk, was to justify your worship of the Catholic Mass on the December 25th. For the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And I gotta tell you, <laughs> um, now this, this points to conduct, you know, give you an example, we live in an apartment complex. We have a noise ordinance from like, what is it, 7 to 10 or something and beyond that, that kind of stuff. You, you know, be respectful, be courteous to your neighbors and that kind of stuff. But, you know, when you actually think about it, I'm one of my worst critics, okay? <laughs> uh, when, I, when I need a, need a kicking, uh, the Lord is quite the critic to me. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The point I'm trying to make here is sometimes uh, you don't want me to love you as I love myself. <laughs> right? Sometimes you don't. <laughs> Sometimes you don't. I, I believe that we should not sin. But guess what? We sin every day. Every day. And sometimes I am my own worst enemy. Right? Our own worst enemy. Yeah, and that's on the backup channel. Anyway, let's continue. But... If ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed of one another. Where it possesses your thoughts, it consumes you to that all you think about. Getting even, fighting fire with fire, the back and forth banter of making a video, 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 until someone's like, hey, psh, that's it, I'm done. Okay? done. This I say then, walk in the capital S spirit, the Lord himself, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. That is a choice that we have to make, a daily choice. The Lord is in us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But remember, he's not pointing a gun at your head, forcing you to make the right decisions unlike what some of these people want you to believe. Okay? Okay? For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary 
the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. And then, of course, I mean, check your reference there. Is there any reference for Romans 7? Okay. When you're a saint, and unfortunately you've made the wrong choices with whom you are fellowshipping with, and that fleshly, which these Christian people are, with spiritual, which some brethren who have made this mistake, that constant conflict comes up. Our enemies themselves being judges, an evident token of perdition. But if ye be led of the Spirit, capital S, ye are not under the law. Yeah, because the law is not a faith. The law is written down. You can see the law written down. What, what, what's faith? What's faith? Huh? Huh? The, the evidence of things not seen? Right? Right. <laughs> they saw God in the Garden of Eden. You're going to see God in the Kingdom of Heaven? Yeah. Okay. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Okay? It's, it mentions adultery because in context of a saint who gets messed up, we're, we're espoused to one husband, the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you let the flesh be the guide, you're committing adultery. Think about it. Now, this is uh, impromptu, by the way. Idolatry. Oh, there you go. Idolatry. Ye shall be as gods. Remember, idolatry is always an extension of the true idolatry, which is that individual idolizing their them own selves i don't idolize myself really then why do you justify that which is contrary to scripture idolatry witchcraft hatred variance emulations hmm. mr dudley do right the enemy there Wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Uh, every one of those in verse 20 is a perfect description of this easy believist, free grace Christianity. Right there. Envying. Murders, oh, threatening to hurt people, huh? Drunkenness, revelings, and such like. <laughs> like that, that drunk gal that was in the, the city, it's a uh, live stream the one day. And he's like, uh, oh, I'm thinking of blocking you because I can't get word in. And one of the most cringeworthy streams that I watched and listened to way back when. I remember that. I can't prove that. I wish I could. Uh, but you know, because you'll see this. Uh, uh, you, you remember that. You remember that. Hey, you got all the, you've got it all recorded and you're sharing it with Rome. Envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That context is spiritual. Spiritual. We as saints can commit any one of these things, but a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. Okay? 
someone who isn't, <laughs> they, they will fall into moments of religiosity and rise up again to their true selves, the natural, unregenerate, brute beast that they are. The passive, smiley, friendly individual, that is not the true individual you are seeing. It's the one that is combative, contrite. Contrite? Yeah. Sorry that they were nice to you. Sorry that they got involved with you, huh? Yeah? You ever put that into the equation, huh? Yeah. See, the religiosity that you see in these Christians isn't who they really are. It's when they get kicked. It's when they are challenged. It's when what they hold dear and justify the most is clearly upended. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. You want to know the level of someone? How do they deal with the rebuke? How do they deal with when what they held dear or what they want to justify gets upended by Scripture? Hmm? The Hebraic Jews, when Paul was giving his defense, they gave audience unto him unto what word that the Lord sent him unto the Gentiles? They gave him audience until he said that. And then they said, away with such a fellow! Hmm? In Acts chapter 2, they were pricked in the heart. Prick, a little blood comes out. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Acts chapter 7, Stephen. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye always resist the Holy Ghost. They were cut to the heart. And when they were cut to the heart, what did they do? They, they did this, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Hmm. Now, hey, personally, I have reacted in hostility before, yes. Yes, I have. I've, I've made that blunder. Yes, I have. Okay, I have a temper, and I'm not afraid to exhibit it, especially in certain situations. Okay, I don't fret men. Okay? <laughs> you know, like I've told people who have threatened my life physically, who have threatened me physically before. Okay, I've been threatened physically before. Okay? I've had people, you know. Okay, I have. All right, and I, I always tell them, it's like, hey, you know, I got a life that I need to consider. Uh, I'll give you 357 reasons why maybe you shouldn't come here. And if that ain't enough, I'll give you 38 reasons more. And I hit what I'm aiming at. Just, just say it, okay? Just say it, okay? But see, that happens with me sometimes too. But see, the fake, they live in that and have shoes of religiosity. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Love is truth. And these guys that I'm addressing don't love truth. They love feelings. They love themselves. They justify sin. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Why do you think that these devils got so up in arms about the scriptural fact that the actual flesh of Jesus Christ was sinful. But God manifest in sinful flesh who kept the law perfectly, hence that sinful flesh was sanctified by God within it, never sinning. Never sinning. Okay? All right? 
<laughs> okay? Why do you think these guys got so upset over that way back when? Huh? Because that's all they're about. It's a theater. And some of these guys are really good actors that deserve an Academy Award. And see, we who are Christ's of the Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth, okay, we fall, but we rise up again. These guys have fallen away, manifesting themselves to you. If we live in the capitalist spirit, let us also walk in the capitalist spirit. Choice. you got to make the right choices. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Luke 16, 15. That, that's easy. Luke 16, 15. Luke 16, 15. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. Oh, you see this? With the, these ones I'm addressing, and also with these King James Bible believing Christians now. They're justifying their, their little rah 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 cheerleader cult clip, clicks or whatever, okay? But God knoweth your hearts. Yeah, he sure does. For that which is highly esteemed among men is, a, is abomination in the sight of God. You know? And yesterday was the 17th. Right? And from the 17th proverb, just one verse, we covered this in yesterday's video. Okay? Uh, one verse, verse 5. Whoso mocketh the poor reproacheth his maker. And he that is glad at calamity shall not be unpunished. I'm not glad at calamities. I, I, I really am not. I don't want to see these guys go through that kind of stuff. But what we need to remember is if it is what the Lord will use to bring that person on to true salvation, then praise the Lord. Okay, but if it isn't, Oh, you're going through that, man, but you made your own bed. Okay? And when you die obstinate, cursing God at your deathbed, I don't even want to see the bloke in hell, but he's going there. And all we can say as saints is, praise the Lord for his righteous judgment. My mother's in hell. A lot of my family is in hell. A lot of your family is too. But when someone dies in self-deception, all we can do as saints is praise the Lord for his righteous judgment. Go to Proverbs 2. Go to Proverbs 2 and then we will be done. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and apply thine heart to understanding, departing from evil. Dear brother, if you see this, come out from among them and be ye separate. How many times do you need to be squashed? Yea, if thou criest for knowledge. Now, now look at these verses. Wisdom and understanding. Knowledge is what comes from what wisdom, fear of the Lord, understanding, departing from evil, and that will give you knowledge. The Lord will give you that knowledge. Excuse me. And liftest up thy voice for understanding. If thou seekest her, there's that reference to wisdom, her, wisdom. If thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, 
Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Okay? He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Sound wisdom, the fear of the Lord. Okay? What's the contrary to that? The fear of man that bringeth a snare. Okay? All right? For the righteous. In this dispensation, saved by his grace through our faith. But what do they do? They save themselves. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. See, self-examination. Judge ourselves first according to the perfect standard. And in you doing that according to the perfect standard, you judge that by the same standard that you judge yourself first. That's how that works. We are fruit inspectors, you devil. Why don't you want your fruit inspected? When wisdom... Oh, then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yea, every good path. There's none good by who? Straight is the way and narrow is the gate. Narrow is the way and straight is the gate. Excuse me. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee, to deliver thee from the way of the evil man. From the man that speaketh forward things, who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, having their eyes open. They think they have light. They think they see because they have their eyes open. But they are miserable, blind, and naked. Who rejoice to do evil and delight in the frowardness of the wicked. They laugh at it. Fools make a mock at sin. And if any of you have engaged or seen any of these live streaming Christians who are whores, that, that, that always, that's full of wonder. Okay, these guys will take on all these different types of within the denomination of Christianity and have dialogue with them. Okay? That we as saints ought not to do that. Okay? Now, some will say, well, what, we're not supposed to wait? When you're on a public setting such as this, and you are ha knowing that you both have contrary viewpoints, and you're not looking to um, inform someone of the truth, but just rather willing to entertain, like it all is. Okay? But they rejoice to do evil and delight in the frowardness of the wicked. Misery loves company. Okay? Fools make a mock at sin. Okay? And as it says in Romans chapter 1, okay? As it says, okay? As it says about these people. Who, verse 32, Romans 1 who knowing the judgment of God, they're not ignorant, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Whose ways are crooked, and they froward in their paths. Proverbs 5. Verses 3 on to verse 6. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. Her, I believe, reference on to Mystery of Babylon, Roman Catholicism, who these people serve. Your mother. 
Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life. Her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. Lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, and the labor and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. And thou mourn at the last, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. And say, how have I hated instruction? And my heart despised reproof. I have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and the assembly. Back to Proverbs 2. Proverbs true, okay? Verse 15 again. Whose ways are crooked, and they forward in their paths. To deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger with, which flattereth with her words. Now note this contrast, okay? The order of mankind is God, man, woman, child. Anything contrary to that is God, woman, child child, pet, man. Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, the mother of harlots, is the, op that Satan's church, is the operating, driving force for a lot of what you are encountering here on YouTube with a lot of these Christians. Okay? So when it transitions to from uh, to deliver thee from the way of the evil man, that evil man is what? To deliver thee from the strange woman who they're working for, Rome. Even from the stranger which flattereth with her words. And oh, they are so smooth with their words, aren't they? Just like the whore. Which forsaketh the God of her youth and forgetteth the covenant of her God. They are their own gods. For her house inclineth unto death, and her paths unto the dead, and the wages of sin is death. None that go on to her return again. Neither take they hold of the paths of life. There are a lot of Catholics out there who are so far gone that they have gone past the point of no return. Not that the Lord cannot save them, but like, you know, the, the one Hispanic Catholic woman that I encountered, you know, <laughs> that lady gone. Okay, it would take a drastic miracle for that woman to actually become a saint. Because she said, meet passing out gospel tracts, she called evil good. And being a Roman Catholic, she calls good evil. She calls evil Catholicism good, and me passing out the tracks, which was good, she called that evil. See how that works? I know I kind of messed that up in the delivery, excuse me. Okay, but none of none that go on to her return again, neither take they hold of the paths of life, that thou mayest walk in the way of good men. They're good men, good paths. There's only one good. And keep the path of the righteous. For the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect shall remain in it. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressors be rooted out of it. None good but God. So, that's going to be it for this little impromptu video. Um, like I said, I... I don't like seeing people taken advantage of. I don't like seeing my brethren treated like garbage. And uh, I take offense for that. So, thank you for watching this if you do. If this offends you, take offense in the gate.
But uh, thank you. Love you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.